My name is Jim Ward, and I am a certified SOLIDWORKS PDM Technical Support Specialist with Go Engineer. In this video, I will be discussing how to set up a computer to run tasks, such as the task to create a PDF from a SOLIDWORKS drawing. This will be for SOLIDWORKS PDM Professional only, as PDM standard only allows tasks to be executed on the computer where the task was initiated. Let's talk about the requirements for the task server or the computer that's going to be running the task. A task server is a computer that is used to run SOLIDWORKS PDM tasks. Of course, that's what it is. Um, it saves engineers time for the task to run on a dedicated computer. That way they don't have to wait for the PDF to generate while, uh, I mean, on their own computer, then they have to, they can't do any work while the PDF is, is being generated. Now, the most common task is to create a PDF of a drawing, but there are other tasks. Of course, you can create step files, and if, with PDM Professional, you can have a task to create almost any of the file types that SOLIDWORKS can create. The task at computer should be the most powerful CAD machine at your company. The reason I say this is because the computer has to do everything on its own. If someone was able to create a file, the task computer has to be able to open up that file and do so automatically through the list here. So the task must download files in PDM, of course, open the drawing in SOLIDWORKS, and with no responses or to prompts or adjustments to the opened file. And it creates the PDF, and then it closes the file from SOLIDWORKS, and it moves on to the next task. Be aware that it has to open whatever drawing has been created by somebody else, again, on the task computer in order to generate the PDF. That's why I'd say it should be a really powerful computer. So the task does run automatically, so the user should verify the created PDF is accurate. If, and if it's not accurate, then contact your PDM administrator. And be aware that it does take one SOLIDWORKS and one PDM license will be consumed by this computer. Now let's talk about what you need to do to set up the task computer. Of course, first you have to install SOLIDWORKS and PDM onto the computer, as it uses both. You set up automatic login with the proper user account. By proper, I mean uh, an account that has enough permissions to do what it needs to do. So it may need to save the PDFs to a particular folder. If it needs to save throughout the vault, then it needs to have, have the folder permissions to save throughout the vault. Whatever workflow the PDF is going into, this user needs to have permissions to add files in that first state of that workflow. And then you need to accept to run tasks on this particular computer. Then in the admin tool, you must select this computer to run the task. Then back on the computer, you start up SOLIDWORKS and you manage any dialogues until SOLIDWORKS starts up without any dialogues. You want to make sure that there's no dialogue waiting for, for SOLIDWORKS to start. In SOLIDWORKS, there are some settings. Uh, load reference documents. You set that to none. You check the box. Do not save read-only referenced files. Discard changes. And you set up default templates. Uh, that is optional, but that does make sure that there's no dialogues that will pop up automatically when you're not looking at it. And then lastly, you set up the computer to automatically log into PDM upon computer reboot. There is some server maintenance that you need to do as time goes by. This, of course, is done by the admin or the PDM administrator. And also, if you have troubles with a uh, PDF file that wasn't generated properly, you need to come troubleshoot and figure out why it didn't. Something you should do probably about once a week is to go in and clear local cache. We have to remember that this computer is downloading files from the vault um, as it needs to um, generate PDF files. It needs to first download the files from the vault. And it's using files from all users. And so it tends to collect a lot of files locally. But once the PDF is generated, it doesn't really need those files anymore. So it's a good idea to go in there once a week, maybe a little bit later if you don't use PDFs that often and clear out the local cache. The archive can get quite large, and so you can actually wind up filling up your entire C drive if you don't go in there and clear out the local cache on the PDF computer. Now, if a PDF isn't generated properly, you need to uh, log into the task computer 
then open the problem file on the task computer. Often that will show why the PDF wasn't generated. Maybe the drawing doesn't open properly and you can try and figure out why it's not opening properly. <clears throat> Normally a PDF will show you exactly what the drawing looks like on the task computer. So it's a good idea to open up that file on the task computer and see what the problem is. If it opens up okay, then manually generate the PDF and take a look at the manually generated PDF. And then lastly, look for problems or dialogues that prevent this from happening automatically. So if you go to the task computer and you double click a drawing and you see a dialogue pop up, then you know it probably got stuck there on that dialogue waiting for somebody to respond to it. All right, so now let's demonstrate what needs to be done in order to set up a computer to run tasks. This is going to become the task computer. So you can see that I have already installed um, SolidWorks and I have already installed PDM. The local view is working. So one of the first things to do is log into the local view as someone who can accept task on a computer and then come down here and accept the task. So to do that, you go to your, you go to this little arrow on the right hand side and you select here task host configuration. Now you decide which task you're going to run on this computer. In this case I'll go ahead and accept um, both tasks and then say OK. That's it for accepting task on this computer. However there are some things that we need to do as far as um, automatic login. So let's set this up to use automatic login. And that's here under local settings in the admin tool. Notice you don't have to be an admin user to set this up because you don't have to log into the Acme Vault to do this. But now under local settings, you'll see there is uh, settings. So double click that. And there's first tab here is automatic login. So you can come to uh, choose your vault. And you say use automatic login and then you have a choice to log in as this user. Now if you log into this computer uh, uh, as a Windows user who also has um, or you're using the Windows credentials to uh, log into PDM, you could just click this button to say log in as a currently logged in user in Windows. If not, you can uh, type in the username and password. In my case, this is a test system, so I don't bother with passwords. However, you will need to put in the uh, username you want to use and the password and tell this OK. Now, for the um, admin, you do need to log into, into PDM now and go to the particular task that you want to run on this system. Open up the task and go to execution method. On the execution method, you'll have to you will look for the computer that you want to run this task on. So you click on that and you do select the top one. Let the system choose the computers to execute the task. Now, if you're on in PDM standard, you don't have these top two options. You only have this bottom one, execute on the computer where the task is initiated. And therefore, you don't have the option of creating a task computer or a computer dedicated to running the task. Now, in my case, I will only do set up this one task, but you would want to do this probably for all of your tasks to run on this particular computer. When you're done, you say OK. And now we need to go look at SolidWorks. So we start up SolidWorks. And again, note that I have already started up SolidWorks and I have gone through and any dialogues that come up automatically, I have taken care of. So what we want is for SolidWorks to start up cleanly. Notice it came up directly to SOLIDWORKS with no dialogues coming up at all. Now what I'm going to do up here is to go look at my options and in external references I want to make sure to check this one second from the top. Don't prompt to save read-only reference documents, discard changes. Actually this is a good one for everybody to set, anybody who uses SOLIDWORKS. This way SOLIDWORKS won't stop to ask you every time you I have a file that's read-only and you, you say, say, a top-level assembly. SOLIDWORKS will no longer stop to ask you about those files that are read-only. They'll just go. And this next one down here about load reference documents, you want to make sure that that is none. By default, I believe it's prompt. We don't want that. We want none. That way it doesn't ask anything when it's loading up files. 
And the last thing that you should probably do is to set up your default templates. In my case, I haven't uh, yet, so I'll go to File Locations, make sure there are document templates. In my case, I am pointing to the default templates over in the 2020 location. The reason you want to do this is just to make sure that there's no dialogues come up. So I'm just going to select some, some templates. And in my case, it doesn't really matter. But yeah, I don't really expect uh, this to be uh, much of an issue, which is why I say that it's optional. Yeah, because um, you're not starting in any new files on this computer, so the fact that you haven't set up templates will probably not be a problem. The last step is a bit tricky, and what we want, need to do is we need to set up the task computer so that whenever it is booted up, it automatically will log you into PDM. This is because you may have a power outage and the computer gets booted back up, but then somebody has to come in and log into PDM in Windows Explorer, unless you set it up to automatically log in upon the computer reboot. The way you do that is you first create a shortcut into PDM. PDM folders are different from other folders and therefore you can't just right click one and uh, create a shortcut as an example right click bring it over and you see, and then release that notice that my only option is to copy it there i don't want to copy i want to create a shortcut so what do you do well you go to a, another folder and right click that one and bring it over and you need to notice i can create a shortcut here that's great. It's the wrong folder, though. So what do we do? Well, we modify that by coming down to Properties. And under Target, we put in where we want it to, to start. And so in this case, it's just a C, C colon Acme, which is the name of my folder. And then Apply and say OK. And now I change the name of it because it's not an Intel shortcut. It's actually a PDM shortcut. Now that I have that, I can now put this in the Windows startup folder. There's actually two startup folders. There's one for all users and another one for the user who's currently logged into the computer. And I want this for all users that regardless of which account we decide to use in Windows to log into this system, we all want PDM to start up. So to do that, you have to right click and choose run. Coming over here and type here to search, um, it doesn't work. Uh, it just does a search for this out on the internet. What we really want is to run. And notice I typed in shell colon. There's no space between the colon and common. There is a space though between common and startup. So this is the easiest way. You can browse to it, but it's a bit deep. So I'll just say okay. And notice that it, it opens up a location. If you click here, you can see where it is, C program data. Now, program data is at the root level of your C drive, but it's normally a hidden folder. So you have to allow yourself to see hidden folders in order to see that. And then inside of program data, you go to Microsoft, Windows, Start Menu, Programs, and Startup. Now, again, this is the location for all users who log into this computer. Now that I have this, I can take this shortcut that I created and just drag it over and drop it here, which moves it to startup. Notice we do say you must provide administrator permission. You must be an administrator on the computer in order to do this. And I will say continue. And notice it now moves my shortcut over into the startup menu. If you decide you don't want this for all users, but only for the one who's currently logged in, you can do that again, right click and go to run. And instead of common startup, you just choose startup or type in startup anyway. So let me delete the common. And again, there's no space between the colon and the startup. I'll say OK. It opens up a different window. And again, this is under your, however you're logged into this computer. In my case, I'm logged in as me, Jim Ward. So it's in your app data. So Jim Ward app data. Uh, and again, app data is normally a, um, a hidden folder as well then roaming, Microsoft Windows, Start Menu Programs, and Startup. So notice at the moment I don't have anything that will start up under my profile just for all users.
And that's that's it. Now you've got it set up so that whenever the computer boots and you log into it, it will come up with this particular window. So let's test that. I will now reboot the computer. Okay, the computer has now rebooted. I'm going to log into it using remote desktop. Now notice um, I have not already logged into it. I'm using remote desktop to do the login. The reason I mention that is because now we have to wait a few moments for the computer to finish booting up after someone has logged into it. And here it is. So it has now opened up the shortcut that we gave it to automatically open up on startup and you can see that is it is now opened up to solidworks pdm and so it is ready to go that is all the suggestions i have for creating a task host server this has been jim ward from go engineer describing what is important when creating a task host server thank you for watching